Today we continue our series on the benefits of labor. What do we mean? We've been looking at some reasons behind that struggle that every now and again seems to exist between your sowing season and your harvest season. That struggle that seems to exist between the time of your believing and the time of your receiving. We have put a few thoughts on the table. If you've missed part one, this is a thumbnail. Please watch it. It will strengthen you. It will carry you through. But today, I want us to focus on the fact that since that struggle many a times is inevitable, since that labor many a times is unavoidable, how do we ensure that at the end of it, we thrive. We don't just survive, we thrive. That at the end of it, that which the devil meant for evil, because that struggle is not God's desire. The outcome, no matter how glorious it might be, that struggle, that turbulent path was not God's desire. The idea for today is to see how in spite of it, that at the end of it, we come out so victorious that what was said of Jesus will be said of us. If the enemy had known, he will not have thrown that onslaught against us. I do understand that this journey can be turbulent at times, but, but with what we will look at today, there are benefits in that struggle. There are benefits in that labor. If this is something you think will bless you, then get ready. Like, share, subscribe. Welcome to Dawn with Tim Grange. Welcome again to Dawn. We're looking at the benefits of labor. This is part two. If you missed part one, this is the thumbnail. Please watch it. It will really do something in your heart. Today, I want us to address a few reasons. I will explain a few others. I might just crisscross over them, but a few benefits that come with some of the struggles that we seem to go through in our journey to go from believing to receiving, to go from sowing to harvesting, there are some benefits. I know when you are in the throes of the conflict, when you are in the heat of the moment, maybe this is not what you want to hear. Maybe you'd rather hear me say, I stretch forth my hand and I declare that, that struggle is over. And I do, I did that in part one and I will do that again and it will work for some of you, but it definitely will not work for all of you the same way those declarations have not worked all the time for me. And the reason is because there are some certain reasons, we looked at that in part one, why those struggles are almost an inevitability. This though, does not need to mark the end of that relationship, the end of that business, the end of that, of that child. It doesn't at all. If we can understand from some of the things I'm going to throw at you, if you will be open-minded to embrace some of the things I'm going to throw at you and see how that which the enemy meant for evil, God, God is able to turn it around for good, you will see that there isn't just light at the end of, of the tunnel. There is a whole range of blessings waiting for you if you will just stick it through. Again, our title, The Benefits of Labor, Part 2. Number one benefit that we see that going through that struggle, going through that motion can actually produce is, according to James 1 verses 2 to 4, it births staying power, it can birth stamina in you. And saying stamina is such a gift. You see, when um, Tyson in his heydays, when Tyson was the meanest and baddest heavyweight boxer that was on the planet, when he fought most people, he took them out in the first few rounds. People always said that that was because he never faced somebody who could actually take the distance, take him the distance, someone who could take his punches and survive and put him through the ropes for the entire um, duration of the match. One day, a man was able to pull that. His name was Buster Douglas. Tyson did knock him down, but he got up and he kept on going. 
and he kept on going and Tyson became exhausted and what some of the pundits had mentioned was the outcome when he was knocked down he struggled to get back up what is the lesson there sometimes sometimes that struggle can build in you the stamina you will require not just for that issue but for other issues in your life you know i can wait this thing out and when i say wait it out you're not just folding your arms doing nothing but you are standing in the power of patience let me read james 1 to the 4 he says my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations diverse temptations doesn't just mean something that challenges your moral code the greek word for temptations here also means a trial a tribulation a, a an attack of some sort okay so it says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing wanting nothing please understand that when it says patient it's not just talking about the fact that you you you, you just lay back and and play dead Patience is a force in the spirit. Patience says to the devil, after you have done everything, I'm still here. By the time you are done, I will still be standing. I will outlive you. I will out, I will, I will out, um, outgame you. I will outclass you in this arena. And that is a powerful tool. And it will not only help you in that moment, once you have built stamina as a result of one situation, nobody can take that situation away from you. It will work for you in every other situation. It builds patience. It establishes stamina on your inside. Another thing that that struggle can do in your life, look at this, it teaches you skill natural skill spiritual skill so you are going through a situation you, you know you're pushing and you're it's turbulent you it has ups and downs it just seems like this thing is not coming to pass and you remind yourself but no i am i am born of god so i have overcome so i'm a victor you remember all of that but 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 the struggle is still there we understand this very often if you will look back some of those struggles because of those struggles you got new revelation you understood a bit better and a lot deeper the workings of God in some of those situations you even acquired new skills for some of those situations you even discovered new relationships that enabled you carry through and so those are things that no one can take away from you the new skills the new relationships the new encounters with God that 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 you had to engage to get you through came about because the enemy thought that by fighting you in that situation, it was going to destroy you, it was going to break you, it was going to cause you to get out of the fight and walk away and maybe even turn your back on God, but you did not. But instead you encountered truths, truths now that nobody can take away from you. So that struggle will build in you the power, the force of patience and stamina. It will also cause you and could also cause you to learn new skill and we saw that with with um what's his name with joseph i mean joseph was in a terrible situation sold as a slave meaning he was going to be a slave for the rest of his life that was the intention but guess what by the time we bump into him this dream um, um dreamer of a boy had become an administrator um, par excellence i suspect he realized that that was a skill that was lacking in the homestead of Potiphar. And he saw that if I can address this issue, I will make life easier for Potiphar. Probably will make life easier for me as well. And it did work. We don't know where he learned the art of administration. But in the midst of his crisis, because of his crisis, he learned how to administrate. There is a very strong chance that living the kind of sheltered life that he was living in his father's house, he probably would not have learned that skill. With this, this affliction that the devil thought would destroy him caused him to learn a new skill. And that skill was what ultimately gave him the edge and made him ruler alongside Pharaoh in that land of his captivity in the land of Egypt. I hope this is helping somebody. Another third thing that could come as a result of going through this whole process, going through this whole motion is you will learn value. Look, I remember a man who was going through a problem in his marriage. Look, he had messed up and he was crying out to God. But there was just, the wife was just not ready to forgive him. And the truth is you couldn't blame her because he had really done bad. 
but he he had believed God and he was struggling. He was trying to show her that he was different. And he was saying to God, I know I messed up. Why won't you forgive me and turn things around as if it was God's fault? But anyhow, uh, we know how we do sometimes. But he was really, really wailing out to God. God, come through for me. And, and then he began to learn how to deepen his relationship with God. I Look, let me put, to cut the long story short. He transformed his life. Do you know? Do you know? By the time his relationship with his wife was restored, he was a different human being. He valued his wife. My goodness, whenever he saw another Delilah, hey, he saw a Medusa with tentacles and serpents and he will run. Why? Because that whole trouble, that whole trial, what he went through, that whole battle to try and get it back and, and, and trying to really get, get his wife back caused him to value his relationship with her like never before. He became the best husband that she could ever dream of. Why? Not because God wanted to teach him a lesson. No! God doesn't use trouble to teach us lessons. I don't have the time to explain to you why we get into trouble, but none of the reasons includes because God wants to teach us a lesson. He's not an evil father. We fall into all this because of the devil, because of ourselves, because of people, but not because of God. But because he went through that, with that which the enemy thought would destroy him, made him reach a new sense of value for his relationship. So that struggle could teach you value. Look, I will bring it all together, but let me push on. Another thing that comes, that could come as a result of this struggle is many of us have come to totally trust God. Do you know what happens when you're going through a rough patch and you are confessing God's word, you are declaring God's word and it doesn't seem to be changing, but you never shift it. Everything that you could lean on, everyone you could trust gave way and, and, and was just not there, but you stayed committed. Do you know a lesson you would have learned? A lesson that the attack of the enemy that was meant to destroy you would have taught you instead that God is your only resource. Look, I've gone through some stuff before that I thought that this was the end of the line, but I'm still standing, I'm still here. I'm still here and I'm still thriving. It has made me see that no matter what I go through, if I can just keep trusting him, this didn't come through, trust him. This didn't break, break forth, trust him. This person walked away, trust him. This one came and betrayed me, trust him. I have seen that if I can just stay there, if I could just learn patience in spite of what I'm going through and then learn the art of just totally trusting him, staying consistent with my commitments irrespective, I will come out okay. My sister, my younger sister will say, last, last, we go day okay. In, in English, it means at the end of it all, we'll be fine. If we will stay committed, we will be fine. Ask David, ask Joseph, ask Moses. At the end, we will be fine. If you will stake it out, don't, don't give up. Stand your ground in the word. You will learn how to totally trust God. That which was meant to destroy you by the devil will suddenly have taught you how to have unmitigated faith and trust in the king. Let me give you another one. That struggle can also teach you collaboration. I mentioned it in passing, but I think it's, it's important that I give it its own thought. You see, collaboration. Sometimes we think, you know, uh, we can do it ourselves and we go at it ourselves. And that's why sometimes we even struggle. Uh, many a times, if you will think back, some people came into your life that helped you through. Some people came into your life, whether spiritual or circular, uh, that gave you information, exposed you to, to, to new, to new um, opportunities that actually carried you through. People that you would not have met if your struggle did not cause you to go knock on those doors, if your struggle did not cause you to go um, um, check out that material. Scenarios, scenarios. Again, that was meant to destroy you, but instead brought the right relationships into your life. That struggle could be a, a stepping stone to a new relationship, a stepping stone to a collaboration that will not just carry you through this moment, but can carry you through several other moments that are to come. So what am I saying? That that struggle, don't worry about it. Stay in the fight. There are lessons to be learned. 
at the end of it, you will be better than you were going into it. It's just the way God works. That which the enemy men, meant for evil, God turns it around for our good. So a lesson that, that that a benefit that that labor could bring into your life is new relationships, phenomenal collaborations. Let me give you two more. It will give you confidence. This one, you should already know what this one is about. If you have been through stuff before and you made it through and then something else shows itself, See, have you been there before? Somebody's going through something you've been through and they tell you about it. You look at all the variables and you just laugh. And the person thinks that you are belittling their pain and you say to them, no, 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 I'm not. But you are laughing because you, this no longer phases you. This no longer scares you. You've been there. You've, you, 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 you've, you've outclassed the devil. You fought him and, and it looked like he won, but you, you triumphed over him. And so you are able to say to that person, ah, come on. Try this, try that, stand there. You know, the Bible says that we're able to comfort people by the comfort that we ourselves have, have received. There is a confidence that, that, that going through stuff that you have triumphed over gives you. There is a confidence when you've been through the worst, but you came out, you came out victorious. When something of that caliber or less is thrown at you, you are not as disturbed. That situation will build confidence in you as you triumph and you will triumph over that situation you will see that you are no longer as phased as you used to be let me give you let me give you the last one it will make you a prized teacher you know they say people who can't do teach that is unfair that is really unfair and an insult to our teachers but there is something about sitting down with someone who has been through what you have been through and they have triumphed. I'm not talking about somebody who has been through what you have been through and they were broken and they are so, they, they, they are better. No. Someone who has been through what you have been through and they triumphed. They, they didn't just survive. They broke the camel's back and broke the enemy. There is something about when they engage you. My, I, I was listening to somebody who was talking about accounting and he was saying that what I brought in somebody else to teach, teach this person accounting. And this person said what his teacher in school had taken a whole term to try and explain this individual in one night just, just transformed his understanding. And I suspected it's because apart from the fact that this was a teacher as well, this person had was a practicing accountant this person used that information on a day-to-day -day basis and so it wasn't just about how it should be done there was a lot of the why it should be done and you and i know once you understand the why it doesn't matter how they twist the questions you will be able to see what's going on there is something about being able to to say when i went through it this was how and what i did to carry me through it makes you a prize teacher. Listen, experience that says the best teacher, I disagree. If we all had to experience everything um, negative for us to learn lessons, our lives will be full of trauma and all of us will consistently be sitting on, on the settee of a psychologist. So no, I disagree that experience is the best teacher. The best teacher is to learn from somebody else's mistake. The best teacher, even more so, is to learn directly from the Holy Spirit and have the discipline to respond to the Holy Spirit as he leads you. But we cannot deny the fact that there are lessons that experience can teach you. There is a hindsight. There is a foresight that you now have. Hindsight, so you know, I ain't going there anymore, being there already. There is a foresight. Hey, this is usually what will occur if I take this route, if I play it this way, because you have experienced a few things. You have your stripes. No wonder Peter said, um, 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 James said, count it all joy. How do I count it all joy when I'm going through difficulty? He says, because the outcome is already secured. He says, joy, not happiness. Because joy, joy is different from happiness. Joy is a decision that you make where you decide, I'm going to offer God thanks because in the midst of this, I have seen the outcome and the outcome was in my favor. Saints, there are benefits that you will experience, I know. When you're in the heat of that struggle, sometimes this is not what you want to hear, but it is the truth. 
let let it do its work and you will see that if you will not throw your toys out of the court if you will not jump ship if you will do the things and understand what i explained to you in part one you will see at the end of this you will be better than you were going into it i close with this thought remember when the three hero boys were going to be thrown into the fire they were thrown into the fire the first thing the fire did was it killed the people that threw them in it but, but we're not trying to kill people here but it also burnt the ropes that was used to tie them the, uh, Nebuchadnezzar said he looked and he saw three boys and one like the son of man and they were walking freely they were walk, walking freely in the midst of the furnace what does that tell us the ropes that was meant to keep them bound so that the fire will have a good licking on them was the first thing the fire burnt off that opposition that conflict that challenge that thing that looks like it's not going to go away it will go away and you will see that which was meant to destroy you will set you on a new pedestal to the glory of the king there is a benefit in your struggle there is a benefit in that labor do not be discouraged do not be cast down seek help physical help if you need to if you feel like you're losing strength don't don't fall into the trap don't fall into that trap where the enemy tries to make it seem as if this is it it's not true it's not so make it seem as if oh other people have it easy it's a lie try to deceive you that oh before uh, before you knew the lord things were better it's a lie you just have a short memory i'm telling you it's a lie it's a lie you when we say that we sound like the children of israel who were saying egypt was better it was a lie they had a short memory not you not me we have not just survived this you have triumphed over this i don't know whether it's sickness you are dealing with you have triumphed i don't know whether it's a divorce you have triumphed i don't know whether it's a child that is that is not how the child should be you have triumphed i don't know whether you've lost a job you have triumphed you have triumphed in the name you have triumphed in the name of jesus you will see of the travail of your soul and you will be satisfied i say to you do not be do not be downcast it is and this is no cliche it is well with you head up chin up chest out face it goliath every time i read the story goliath falls he has fallen for your sake god bless you if this has blessed you like share subscribe this has been tim grange on the